All right, YouTube, how you doing? Welcome back to the channel and welcome back to NBA basketball. It is April 9th. We got ourselves a jam-packed NBA slate to dive into in today's video. There were no games yesterday, so we got a bunch today. Like we always do when we go through each and every one of these games, I'll give you my lean on the spread. I'll give you my lean on the total. We'll talk about any other plays like player props that I like within the game as well. But as always, keep an eye on the pinned comment. If you do want to fade me and do the opposite of my picks, all of my plays will be listed out in the pinned comment. In terms of our recap from two nights ago, Started off hot, hit Jabari Smith Jr. over in threes, and then the Cavs Clippers over, and then Heat money line don't come through. I almost took them plus two. They lose by two, so take a womp womp there. And then Chet Holmgren kills us on the hook. He has 10 rebounds. So a two and two night, not going to kill us, but it is unfortunate to see. We are up over 53 units this NBA season, which is mind-blowing to me. Like, I'm not that good of a sports better, but somehow, you know, we've gotten a little lucky a few times, so we shall take it. But um, in terms of our ride of the day from a couple nights ago, let's get the cha-ching. We'll pump in some crowd noise here for the franchise. He had Wemby over 41 and a half. PRA. He absolutely crushes it. Um, he had 30 plus and I think like 18, whatever it was. Wemby absolutely went off. So shout out to DeFranchise. If you guys don't know what the ride of the day is, it's simple. All you have to do is use hashtag ride of the day in the comments. Give me an absolute banger of a play and I'm jumping on board with one person's pick. Giving you a shout out in the next video, win or loss. I'm also shouting you out over on my Twitter slash X at FGuyBoston. You'll see that rotate throughout here uh, during the show. And if you win, we can Continue to ride with your picks. So looking forward to seeing what the franchise has for us in today's video. And we'll jump on board and ride with him. And I'll tweet it over here at FGuyBoston. But all right, guys, let's go ahead and jump into today's games. Hit that like button. Hit that subscribe button. We might go through these somewhat quick because of how many games there are. We're not going to find value in every single one of them. So just FYI. But uh, yeah, let's get going here. First off, starting off with a game that I don't think has as much value. Charlotte Hornets taking on the Dallas Mavericks here in this spot. Obviously, the Hornets are out of it. They don't care about uh, winning or anything like that. Dallas probably pretty good to go in their playoff spot in the fifth seed as well. So this game shouldn't have too much juice be juice behind it. Right now, Luka and Kyrie both not on the injury report. But uh, like I've said before, like I wouldn't be surprised if some guys just randomly sit out to, to close out the year uh, here, especially when you're playing Charlotte. And Charlotte is 13-point dogs here in this one. Uh, total sitting at 222. If I had a gun to my head and you tell me that Luke and Kyrie are playing, I'll lay the points. But I don't know if Dallas comes in uh, with that much of, you know, eagerness to, to win this game by a bunch. But I just cannot back Charlotte here in this spot. Uh, as of late, they've been pretty terrible. Uh, they got that one win against Orlando, but that was their first win, uh, you know, in the last few couple weeks or so. So give me Dallas here minus the points. In terms of the total, uh, I don't mind taking a peek at the over, even though I think Charlotte's going to have a tough time keeping up in this game. Like, they're defense is so bad that I can't imagine uh, it's anything different like uh, what's, the, what's the wrong saying we always say uh, anything different like Dallas scoring would be like a hot knife going through hot butter um, yes I know hot butter would be melted but give me the over in this spot as well from a player prop perspective I'm not really seeing much that I'm loving um, I don't hate and it's kind of a crazy play I don't hate Luka over three and a half turnovers uh, weirdly enough like this is a Charlotte team that to point guards they've allowed um the fifth most turnovers, two point guards on the season. And he's hit this in nine straight games. And when he plays bad teams, like he's going to try and do a lot and a lot of crazy things potentially leading to turnovers. And he has the ball so much. So what a weird player prop that shows the lack of value in this game, right? Like I'm looking to a, a point guard, Luca, one of the best players in the league turnover props. Next up, we have Philly taking on Detroit here. Um, everybody's listed as questionable for Philadelphia. Maxi, Lowry, Harris, and Embiid. Uh, Melton also listed as a game-time decision, as is Cade Cunningham on the Detroit side of things. If everybody plays, I do think that Philly's going to try and ramp up heading into the playoffs here, so I might actually even uh, consider laying the points. Probably not, but, I mean, I'm saying might. Like, I I've done crazier, so I would lean towards Philly uh, in this spot if everyone were to be playing. I just don't know if everyone's going to play right like they don't want to they want to make sure Embiid's good to go not necessarily prioritize uh his ramping up into the playoffs so could could see uh you know him sit and even Maxi sit that type of thing um if Cade Cunningham plays I like his over 10 and a half rebounds plus assists um this is a spot that he's hit in eight of his last 10 games he's hit it in 67 percent of games this season uh his last two games 
Washington and Memphis, not very good teams, but if everyone sits on Philly, like we could see a pretty much like a G League type team anyways, right? But he had eight rebounds, seven assists against Washington, and then eight assists, four rebounds against Memphis. Over his last 10 games here, he's averaging 13 potential assists and nine rebound chances. I love to see that. Um, and, you know, if we were to play the 50-50 the game there, that means he's going to grab six and a half, uh, you know, get six and a half assists and four and a half potential rebounds. You do the math. That adds up to 11. That's over that 10 and a half. So another spot that I would consider there if he does play. But I feel like every time we've uh, – rolled with Cade Cunningham as a final play. He ends up being a late scratch. In terms of the total, I'll lean towards the under in this spot. Um, I just don't see much prolific offense, you know, happening on either side, especially if, if the Sixers do not play their guys. All right, Toronto taking on the Pacers here. Uh, this is a Pacers team that, I mean, if you guys have been watching since the beginning of the year, I've been kind of like puzzled on how and when to bet them uh, overall. They end up beating Miami in their last game, which that was a game in which I was on Miami. Uh, so it's kind of tough. They've won two straight games here. Toronto's also won two straight games. Uh, they got the win against Milwaukee, which we were pleased about. We kind of were big on that game. Um, we had them plus 17 and a half, though. And Washington, they beat by eight points. It's five-point favorites. So, okay, is Toronto feeling something at the end of the year? Probably not. And though this shouldn't have the biggest standings implications, uh, the Pacers won game behind the Cavs, the fifth seed. We talked about the Cavs. Huh? Look at them just falling from that three seed all the way to five. Um, and But the Pacers are one above the Sixers for that sixth seed as well. So I don't necessarily know if uh, there's as much time to be able to to, to lose that, but they're probably going to still want to win some games, but 12 points is probably a little bit too much for me, so uh, as crazy as it is, and I'll sound the cycle alert alarm, I guess. I'm going to lean Toronto again. Like, Toronto has cashed for us a couple times now, uh, getting these big numbers, but, you know, what's probably going to happen is that the, the Pacers are just going to smush them because that's what happens when we bet against the Pacers. Now, the total sitting at 233 right now, I can't help but take a peek at the over in this spot. Uh, you have a Pacers team that we know is going to play with pace, and so is uh, this this Toronto team. Uh, six fastest pace in the last 10 games. Pacers third fastest pace, and I don't really see much much defense you know and it's not like toronto loves scoring at the hoop either i mean they don't really love scoring anywhere they're not that good offensively but they do play with fast pace um so yeah give me that give me that spot there in terms of a player prop the only one that i i like here is going to be kelly olenic under seven and a half rebounds i think that line is now too inflated after a oh big deal nine rebounds against washington give me a break guy um he had two rebounds in his last uh two games against them one of those he played 24 minutes that was just uh you know over a month ago so give me the under seven and a half we've been fading olenix rebounds all year long and it's been pretty damn profitable all right, before we jump into the rest of the slate, I want to shout out Sleeper, guys. you got to go check it out. They have a free Jason Tatum square today. We'll talk about that game in a little bit as he takes on the Bucks. But .5 points, Jason Tatum, pretty good basketball player. Head over to Sleeper. It's a great player prop app. I've been loving it ever since it came out. I use it on the daily, so if I use it, I'm promoting it meaning I'm promoting something that I like. I would not do that if I didn't believe in it. So I do think it's a really cool app. They just installed or, uh, you know, developed alternate lines as well, which is really cool. But yeah, go ahead and get this Jason Tatum free square. I'll have a link in the pinned comment. So just check the first comment here in the comment section. Sign up for Sleeper. You'll get your first deposit absolutely matched, which is absolutely a great deal. I said absolutely 10 times, but Jason Tatum's absolutely going to score one point today if he does get the run. Uh, so go ahead and check it out, guys. All you got to do is combine two or more player props into a slip. The more you win, the more you get paid out, you can win up to 100 times over on Sleeper. So go try it out. I like this app a lot. Um, I think you will too. Go check it out. That link is going to be in the pinned comment. Let's get back into the slate here. All right, Atlanta taking on this Heat team here. Like I said, the Heat kind of let us down last game. Um, Bam Adebayo, Jovic, and Terrazier, all game time decisions in this one as well. So definitely worth keeping an eye on the injury report. If those guys play, I like the Heat in this spot. Eric Sprosler has been very vocal about not wanting to be a play-in team. It looks like they're going to be a play-in team, so I'm assuming there's going to be some fire under their asses to kind of finish the season strong and head into the playoffs slash play-in um, on a good note. So give me Miami here minus the points. In terms of a total sitting at 220, you have the Hawks who are probably going to want to run, right? But I think I'm going to have to trust the Heat's defense and the Heat's sort of pace if they win this game to keep this game below that 220 mark. I've also seen 221 out there, so obviously shop around makes sure you guys are getting the best line available, but I'll lean towards the under as well. Uh, from a player prop perspective, uh, nothing that I'm loving as of right now, so keep an eye on the pinned comment. There could be some uh, plays that we end up rolling with, but just I'm not finding anything as of right now. 
Bucks taking on the Celts. Middleton and Giannis listed as game time decisions, as is Porzingis on the Celtic side of things. But right now, Drew Holiday, Derek White, Jalen Brown, and uh, Jason Tatum all expected to play, which is nice to see. Um, in terms of where I think this game's going to go, uh, I like the Celtics in this one. Now, do they have to care? Do they have to win? All that? No, but like it's Celtics Bucks. They're not going to take the game off just because there's only a couple games left in the year. So I expect them to come out and play pretty hard in this one, or at least they should. As a Celtics fan, I'd probably probably be pretty damn disappointed if they go and kind of just roll over and say oh well this game doesn't matter this could be a set the tone for the playoffs type of a game because as of right now this is who they're slated to see you know if all things work out in the eastern conference finals right um and the celtics and bucks have had definitely a good little uh series as of late but in their last three games here the celtics have won three of those uh, but milwaukee has been covering but this is a very very low number like um i don't necessarily see the Celtics needing to, you know, if they win by one, fine, but this is only a two point spread. So uh, I'll lean in the Celtics direction. I also don't mind taking a peek at uh, Derek White over four and a half assists. He's hit that nine of his last 10. He's averaging 11 potential assists per game in his last 10. Um, and then in terms of Kristaps Porzingis, I'll continue to like taking a peek at his over one and a half threes, but his points has been a nice line too. Um, at 17 and a half, he's cashed out in seven of his last 10. And then from a Bucks perspective, uh, good old faithful, we really haven't um, played it all that much uh, lately, but uh, taking a peek at some of Brooke Lopez's numbers, we don't have lines out right now, but if we can get him for over one and a half threes it could be a good look as as to i think that that's going to be the spot in which uh he may be able to have a few shots go up against the Celts. and then total wise i'll be honest with you guys i'm totally on the fence no pun intended i think that this is a spot in which we could see playoff basketball and low scoring and defense but um based on what we've seen honestly from the the bucks as well as the celtics as of late like the the defense of the celtics looks good but their offense they could drop 130 on you at any given moment so i'd probably lean towards the over but i don't think that makes its way into being a final play all right, Bulls taking on the Knicks. Chicago wins this one outright as dogs um, last game here. Uh, I do think that the Knicks, uh, when they play, uh, like a week ago or so, right? Um, but Chicago didn't look all that great against Orlando. Um, they're home now, so I guess we can give them a little bit of credit. But I think that this Knicks team... Uh, has a little bit more fire under them. Like, they're the four seed right now, um, tied with the Magic. The Magic have the the, the the tiebreaker. Like, this Knicks team could win this game, and maybe Orlando lose today, and the playoffs look a little bit different, right? They're also only a half game above um, the Cavs for the fifth seed, so wins probably more at a premium here uh, for the, the Knicks. Uh, the Bulls... They, they honestly want to win too. Right now, they're the nine seed, so they are in the play-in. Um, but if they lose the remainder of their games and maybe the Hawks win a couple, like the Bulls could be the 10 seed, right? And that's the difference of facing the Sixers or the Heat. To be honest, I don't know how much of a difference that'll make. But yeah, the Knicks, I do think that this could easily be a spot where they want to get into, uh, you know, the three seed. So I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to lay the points as the Knicks. As long as everybody plays for them, which nobody's on the injury report as of right now. Uh, Bogdanovich will say that's probable as well. Um, and then also the, the Chicago injury report. Desunmo, Caruso, and White all listed as questionable. So if they don't play, I like this minus five even more. Uh, from a total perspective... We do see two 12 and a half. I don't think it's going to be a high scoring game, but I think both teams can get close to 110. So I'm going to lean towards the over two 12 and a half in this spot. Uh, from a props perspective, I don't have much that I'm, I'm loving, but uh, you know, if I had to, to, to put a gun to my head, I'd look at DeMar DeRozan. Uh, this is a Knicks team that over the last 10 games hasn't really been all that great at covering the mid range. Um, and I like his PRA here. He's averaging 11 potential assists per game, seven rebound chances per game. Uh, and he's hit nine of his last 10 over that mark of 34 and a half PRA and he's hit it in eight straight games last time he's played the Knicks he's hit it in four of his last five three straight I'm literally talking myself into it the more and more I talk about it so uh, DeMar DeRozan over 34 and a half PRA could also be a look for me in this one all right, Houston taking on Orlando. I just talked about, I guess, the implications of some of these games in the uh, East right now, and Orlando definitely looking for wins at this point, and they have a great matchup here against Houston. Like, Houston, to me, I've already said it, is kind of on auto-fade right now. Ever since that fake win streak where they played a bunch of cupcake games, uh, they've played Dallas. Okay, good team. They played Minnesota, Golden State, Miami, and then Dallas again. Like, they've played good teams, but Orlando's no different. Orlando's a playoff team. Like, I think Orlando comes in and wins by more than three points, so give me them in this spot um in terms of injuries Fonz Wagner is listed as questionable so yeah that would suck if he's out but Bencaro Carter Suggs Harris like these guys should be able to hold their own um in terms of of being able to you know win this game uh and essentially if they win this game I think they end up winning by that uh 
by that number. From a player prop perspective, uh, I don't mind Franz Wagner here under rebounds and assists. I also don't mind his under rebounds. But uh, rebounds plus assists is definitely something that I would consider because he's only averaging five potential assists per game in his last 10 games here. Seven rebound chances. You cut those in half, you're looking at right around, um, so five cut in half, two and a half, right? And then you cut seven in half, that's three and a half. You're looking at someone that should be landing right around six rebounds plus assists. Eight and a half is the line. And this is obviously a team uh, in the Magic that's very good at rebounding. And, uh, excuse me, the Houston team that's obviously very good at preventing assists because uh, their perimeter defense isn't all that great. So they should be able, like, I wouldn't be surprised if Wagner goes out there and scores 20-plus points. I don't think the rebounds and assists are going to be there overall. Um, and then from a total perspective, I'll take the over, but I don't really love this. I just don't believe in this Houston defense as of right now. Memphis taking on the Spurs here. Um, a lot of teams on back-to-backs, obviously, too. I should have mentioned that in some of these uh, these other games. But nonetheless, give me the Spurs minus the three and a half points. I think that they're actually, like, really caring about playing games down the stretch. Maybe to just kind of close out the year uh, successfully. They're already the 15th seed going up against the 13th seed here. But uh, the San Antonio team, bad loss against Philly. But they're 7-3 against the spread in their last 10 games. Wemby's looking good. I'll lean towards the, the Spurs here. Um, and then on a total perspective note, I'll also lean towards the over. I don't necessarily see the Grizzlies stopping uh, what the Spurs are doing lately offensively. And I'm not saying the Spurs are going off offensively, but, uh, you know, they've had a couple 120-plus games in their last seven games or so. All right, I talked about back-to-backs, right? Now we're looking at Minnesota taking on Washington. Minnesota 17-point favorites in this game against Washington. Minnesota's the one seed right now. They're technically tied with the Nuggets. Um, and I believe the Thunder are either a game back, half game back, something like that, right? Well, Minnesota has a game tomorrow against the Nuggets in Denver. So they have to be thinking about that game over this game, right? So this is spot where as crazy as it is, I'm probably going to lay the point or take the points with Washington um, plus 17, which is absolutely crazy. But think about it. Why is Minnesota so concerned with this when they have to travel to Denver after this game, right? Uh, so give me Washington as psycho as that is. In terms of the total, uh, I'll lean towards the under. I don't think that, you know, uh, Minnesota is going to go balls to the wall trying to score uh, offensively today. And that also lean towards the under helps that plus 17. And I'm sure we'll talk about something very similar. Wink, wink. When we look at the Nuggets game. Now, Oklahoma City hosting um, the Sacramento Kings here. They're also on a back to back. They play the Spurs tomorrow. So this should be two spots where OKC can actually get a couple wins. I expect them to try in both of these games. Jalen Williams listed as questionable, but Shea Gilgis Alexander is expected to play. Give me the thunder in this spot. Uh, playoff implication wise, the Kings you know, they want to win games too. They're, they're sitting in the eight seed right now, a half game above the nine seed, a full game back of the Pelicans in the seven seed, but the Thunder only a game back of first place. If they can rattle off these two wins, like their next two games, Kings, and then they play the Spurs, like they should be able to get a couple wins here. Uh, if all goes according to plan, they're home for both of them as well. So give me them minus the five and a half points. Total right now sitting at 226. I think that the Thunder D up tonight. Give me the under um, 226. I expect this right around the, the 220 mark. Uh, and no no real player props. These back-to-back -back, like implication games, uh, I don't really love looking at the player props because I'm more concerned with looking at the entire team and how they might play given the circumstances, if that makes sense. All right. We kind of talked about the same mindset. I do think that the, the Washington one looks a little bit better against Minnesota, but Utah taking on Denver. I think both Minnesota and Denver win their games, by the way. But this is a spot in which you may be able to get uh, Utah at a good number. Everybody's out for them. I understand that. But look at, we'll flash over to Rotowire. Look at the Denver right here. Their lineup. Game time decision. 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 Um, yes, you know, these guys are probably going to play, to be completely honest. They're listed as uh, most likely to play. But overall, like... Denver could punt this game away, not from a win-loss perspective, but to win by 16 points. I don't know. So I'm going to probably lean towards the Utah Jazz here. And I also considered a teaser of teasing both Washington and Utah up to like, you know, 20 plus points for each of them. So we'll see, guys. It's probably going to blow up and backfire like both Denver uh, and Mem uh, Minnesota. The one mindset I could have is like they have a tough game tomorrow, right? So why don't they both secure a win tonight? Like that could easily be the mindset. But again, a win is a lot different than winning by 20 points. You catch my drift? So yeah, maybe I'm crazy. Let me know in the comments if you like that idea. How do I say that? Um, how do I say that? Comment B, 
number two be back to back because it's kind of like the back to back theory here that Denver and Minnesota are definitely looking ahead to the next one. So comment B to B if one you made it this far in the video and two. You don't think I'm crazy because I know I'm sounding the psycho alert alarm. Plenty of people are going to be like, Minnesota and Denver are going to mop the floor with these teams. But it's a terrible spot, like a look-ahead spot you like you read about. Um, and again, we're not saying that Minnesota or Denver loses. I'm more or less saying that they might win by like 12 points, which is still us covering with ease, you know? Maybe, maybe I'm the psycho in the room, probably. Um, in terms of the total here, looking at 225.5, um, I think, you know, Contrary to Minnesota, you know, slowing down, not going balls to wall offensively, I think when Denver doesn't try to score, um, the pace actually kind of goes up. And what I mean by that is they're so particular and such good, you know, team basketball offense uh, that I, I honestly think when they're just kind of like playing basketball, their pace kind of jumps a little bit, as weird as that might be. And we know Utah's going to run. So I think I'll lean towards the over in this one ever so slightly. I'm probably such a psycho. Like, I'm going to look at these games tomorrow, and it's going to be Minnesota 1 by 35, Denver 1 by 23. And I'm like, yeah, you called that one right, Ev. All right, Lakers taking on the Warriors here. Uh, this is the 10 seed going up against the 9 seed in the play-in as of right now. Um, I don't necessarily have a, the strongest of opinions on this game, so hate to kind of like, you know, do that to you. But LeBron and Anthony Davis, questionable. We have to say that every single game. Uh, I think in this spot, to be completely honest, I'm going to lean towards uh, the, the Warriors just because I, I think that they have a little bit more... I don't know. I don't know how to phrase what I'm trying to say. I think they have a little bit more sort of want to make sure things are shored up heading into the playoffs. They have been playing good basketball as well. They played some cupcake teams, but this Lakers team, they did win a few in a row, but it was Brooklyn, Toronto, Washington, Cleveland in a bad game. And then they play Minnesota, who's a decent team, and get beat by 10. So I don't know. This is obviously a Lakers and, and, and or LeBron and Steph type game, so you never really know what's going to happen there. But I think if I think it's going to be a close game, I'll take the Warriors, and I think they might even win it outright. Uh, total sitting at 235 here give me the under in this spot I, I think if I if I roll with an under and we start to look good there I don't mind having the two and a half three points on my side with the Warriors all right we got the Suns taking on the Clippers here Suns the sixth seed and the Clippers the four seed um, I don't really see much that would matter too much I think the Suns want to win this game more to not fall into the the play in right so I think that the Suns have a little eagerness on their side there uh, no Kawhi Leonard but Yusuf Nurkic is a game time decision as well because of that play-in implications here just for this game alone, I think I'm going to lean towards the Suns, but I'll, I'll admit 7.5 seems like a lot of points. So this seems like it's a little bit too much for me to actually confidently play, but I can't really look at the Clippers side, uh, to be completely honest in this one. Uh, from a total perspective, we're looking at 226.5. I think both these teams think about defense in this one, um, especially sharing that up going into the, uh, the, the, the playoffs pretty damn soon. So I'll lean slightly towards the under. Uh, from a player prop perspective, we do have a player prop that I'm liking in this one, uh, and it's going to be Grayson Allen over 5.5 rebounds plus assists. Another guy that's been cashing this as of late, 9 of his last 10 games. Averaging eight rebound chances and five potential assists. So we should be looking at, um, you know, again, if we do the 50-50 rule, two and a half plus four, we should be looking at six and a half rebounds plus assists. Okay, so I like this spot for him um, in terms of how he matches up against the the the. the the Clippers, it's nothing too impressive. Um, he's landed kind of right in between this. He had seven and five this season against them. But yeah, that's going to be a spot that we definitely consider in terms of a player prop. Portland taking on the Pelicans. I just kind of mentioned the Pelicans and the Suns being right around the same record here. One being the sixth seed, one being the seventh seed. So yada, yada, yada. But it is the Trailblazers. Um, and I don't think that um, the, uh, the Pelicans really should have trouble with them today. But... I don't think that that's that's the easiest of, of spots here for them to be completely honest. Like you look at uh, you look at what the Pelicans have done lately, and and we almost put them on like a ban list, right? Like uh, they just have not been getting the job done for us. Uh, they beat Phoenix, so it's like, oh, do they have a little in the tank? I'm not quite sure. I'll lean Pelicans, but I don't think I bet it because they've scorned me a little bit too many uh, too much as of late. Total sitting at 213. I know this is going to be a slow game. I understand that, but it's a little bit too low for me um, overall. So I'm going to stick away from that. And guys, it's going to wrap for today's show. Hope you guys did enjoy. Make sure you're checking out the MLB videos as well. We had a great night last night in the MLB. That's already posted. And we'll have our Masters video um, for the Masters golf tournament this weekend. So make sure to check that out as well. But yeah, we'll catch you guys in the next one, all right? Peace out. Thank you.